Many of you may know me as a global warming activist, so you actually might be surprised that I'm here to talk about the benefits of family dinner. It does seem like an odd transition, I agree, but if you look closely, there is a connection between planetary warming and the cooling trend in family closeness. The glaciers are not the only things being eroded. Our overwhelming schedules and our current lifestyle are chipping away at family life. And because we aren't paying attention, something critically important is slipping away. Now, according to a recent Kaiser Family Foundation study, kids are spending, on average, seven and a half hours a day on some form of electronic device. And that doesn't include the time they're texting. So we may all live under one roof, but we are leading separate lives in separate rooms, on separate computers, watching separate televisions, and eating separate meals. When sleeping is the only activity we're all doing at the same time, I mean, the hope for connected family time may seriously be headed towards extinction. Now, I'm the mother of two teenage daughters, and I say that right off the bat because it's an immediate sympathy builder for anyone. <laughs> See, it worked, right? Anyone who's gone through it. And like any parent, not a day goes by where I haven't made a million mistakes or second-guessed myself. So I'm definitely not standing up here as a parenting expert, but I did have a gigantic parenting epiphany recently sitting at my kitchen table. It was an ordinary school night. Dessert had long since ended and the last remaining crumbs of the chocolate chip cookie had been eaten when I realized that both my teenage daughters were still sitting there and they were talking to me. Now, this wasn't an isolated incident. In fact, this is pretty much what we've been doing five nights a week for over a decade. But the enormity and the power of it hit me. That the ritual of family dinner was truly transforming. And that in addition to producing kids who ate a whole range of good food, which is an accomplishment in itself, right? The family dinner also provided us a safe, predictable, cozy time every day for us to purposely be a family. Even when we were mad at each other, even when everybody was stressed over homework and tests, we showed up at the table. Family dinner had actually ritualized access to each other. And as a result, dinner has turned out to be the healthiest habit and the most important activity my family does. And when things got really tough, the ritual of the dinner table worked magic. So in my case, divorce changed the shape of my family. But dinner got us through it, and even eventually, catch this one, coaxed my ex back to the table for weekly meals. I'm not kidding. So having that ritual to fall back on spoke volumes that even though we were in a transition, we were still a family, and dinner will be served. Now, that's what I've learned from my own personal experience, but the scientific research on this topic is even more compelling. I mean, dozens of universities have studied this, including Columbia and Emory and Harvard, and they've all reached the same conclusions that basically everything a parent worries about can be improved by the simple act of sitting down and sharing a meal. Just name your parental anxiety. Drugs, alcohol, smoking, teen pregnancy, eating disorders, depression. According to the research, regular family meals lower all those risks. Now, that might be enough to get parents to start ringing the dinner bell, but the benefits don't stop there. Are you concerned about your child's self-esteem, resiliency, academic achievement? Do you know that a 20-year survey of merit scholars had one thing in common without exception? They all came from families who ate together three or more nights a week, every single one. And if someone had told me, you know, back then when I started my Taco Tuesday ritual that I was, you know, molding a future merit scholar, I would have laughed. But, but it is true. Children who have regular meals with their parents do better in every aspect of life. So why? Well, the reason is the dinner table provides the most effective place to share values, pass on family history, very important, debate opinions, build vocabulary, learn manners, and so much more 
one meal at a time, meal after meal after meal after meal. So why, as a society, are we letting this incredible tool for raising children slip through the cracks? Why are we shortchanging our families and ourselves? Why are we eating so many meals on the run or in the car or standing next to the counter or in front of the television? An average meal today lasts less than 20 minutes. I mean, talk about low priority, right? Dinner, dinner is like a pit stop to pack in the protein, like filling up our gas tanks. We're so overscheduled, we're working so hard, rushing, that we forget what all the hard work is actually for. I mean, honestly, what are we rushing to if we aren't rushing to sit down with the people that we love? In some ways, progress has set us back. And as we race forward and leave family dinner behind, we've had an explosion of health problems that were unheard of a few generations ago. Coincidence? No. We're, we're in the midst of diet-related diseases so severe that they're now America's number one killer. Obesity is growing faster than any other public health condition in the country's history. And hand in hand with obesity, of course, comes diabetes, and the stats on this are frightening. I mean, the CDC recently reported that by mid-century, the number of people dealing with diabetes could potentially be one in three. So how the heck did we get here, and how do we get out? Well, let's start with the fact that today, more than half of our meals are purchased outside of the home. When you don't cook it yourself, you don't know what's in it. What you can count on, though, is probably higher in salt, fat, and sugar. Fast food today makes up a third of everything we're eating. 10% of our kids' calories is coming from soda. And, of course, we're eating way too much meat. I mean, this is a staple that we used to enjoy a few times a week. Many people are now eating it three times a day. And uh, guess what? It's not our grandparents' chicken either, right? The meat we're eating is full of antibiotics and hormones and chemicals. And of course, our love of convenience is also a really big part of this problem. The microwave is great for reheating, but let's face it, it has spawned a trillion dollar food culture of eat fast, eat processed, and eat alone. Now throw in mindlessly gobbling down that food in front of the television, and you have a perfect recipe for a health crisis. Even the issue of civility, which we're all talking so much about, or our lack of it, has its roots across the dinner plate, because it's there that we all learn our first lessons in civilized behavior, right? How to take turns, and how to listen, and how to share. To solve this problem, we need to rewind, and it doesn't require any government subsidies, yay, or fancy appliances. I mean, all we need is a reminder of how it once was and should be again. Once upon a time, all food was organic. I mean, we bought it locally. We cooked it from scratch. We even grew some of it ourselves. We waited till June for strawberries and corn knee-high by the 4th of July. Back then, our food was better quality, we spent more time together enjoying it, we had fewer health problems. Back then, family dinner was a non-negotiable. I mean, if you didn't want to show up for dinner, you better have a doctor's note. <laughs> family dinner was at the core of America's value system, and it really needs to be at the core of the new food revolution we're at the start of right now. Finally, okay, a problem with a solution that is affordable, highly effective, available to us every day, and emotionally fulfilling to boot. So the bottom line is, if we want to lead healthier lives, if we want stronger family bonds, if we want to combat obesity and diabetes, and live in a more civil country, and I'll even throw in lowering our carbon footprint, we need to sit down and eat with each other more often. And for me, looking back now that my kids are almost grown, and I really see how precious little time you have with teenagers, I take some comfort in knowing that for most days, for at least an hour, we all stopped what we were doing. And we sat down together, and we talked, and we laughed, and we fought, we played games, we discussed dilemmas and newspaper articles. That is time I can account for. So whether your family includes kids, or just friends, or coworkers, 
Whether the meal is soup and a salad, a PB&J sandwich, or three courses and a homemade apple pie, family dinner will bring you all great pleasure and help make sure life doesn't get away from you. As writer Francine de Plessé Gray once said so beautifully, and I quote her, dinner rituals have nothing to do with class or working women's busy lives or any particular family structure. I've had dinners of boiled potatoes with families in Siberia, suppers of deli cold cuts with single welfare mothers in Chicago, all made memorable by the grace with which they were offered and by the sight of youngsters learning through experience the art of human companionship. Thank you. Thank you.